One of the most important tasks of any web application or website is to communicate with an external API. These are the six most common options you have for API calls in JavaScript. So the most well known is probably the Fetch API and it's very close between the Fetch API and Axios. But let's start with the Fetch API because this one is native in the browser. We don't need to import anything to use this. So we can just write Fetch. And in here, to make a GET request, we only have to specify the URL. Now we're going to use a simple service that will send back some fake data. Right, so this service will send back um, some JSON data that represents the users. Now fetch works with promises, right? So fetch here returns a promise and you can consume a promise in two ways. You can use dot then, the traditional syntax, these days, you can also write await in front of a promise. I have a whole video on promises. I highly recommend you check that out next. So here we'll use the traditional syntax, dot then. And usually it's formatted like this. So we make a request to this uh, server here and eventually it sends back a response. And that's what we get access to in here. We can call that response or just res. Uh, let's quickly see what we get. I have live reload, so it immediately starts fetching when I save here. Okay, so we get back a response object. So we see a couple of things. Most of this is not really important. What we're actually interested in is the body, because this will be the actual data that we want. But we don't get the data here. It's something with stream. So what happens here with fetch actually is that with the initial response object, we, we only get back some headers, some metadata basically. Right? We have to wait some additional time before all of the data uh, has been streamed in. Right? This makes of sense imagine that you have a lot of data right we're not gonna get all of that immediately right so we have to wait some additional time to get all of the data so what we're gonna do here and what people typically do is use the json uh, method here because the data will be in json format with this method we're basically gonna wait until all of the data has been uh, downloaded and then it will immediately convert it from json format to normal javascript format since we have to wait some additional time this is actually asynchronous as well so we get a promise again and we want to return that promise and then we can tack on another dot then we can chain them to get the value that this promise will be fulfilled with which will be the actual data in normal javascript format so let's see what we get here okay so then here we actually get the data that we want right so here we can see all the users right so in here we can do whatever we want with the data all right so we could tag on dot catch here to deal with uh, certain errors but i have a whole video on the fetch api i'm gonna ignore error handling here if you really want a sophisticated structure with fetch definitely check out that video okay so this was Fetch. Now we get to Axios, it's very close uh, competitor, and this is an external library, meaning I cannot simply start using axios.get, right? because Axios, right, it needs to come from somewhere. So I'm going to go in my HTML here, and here I need to make sure that we are uh, linking to Axios, so that the browser can import that as an external resource. So I'm going to paste a script tag here, which will uh, link to that Axios library. As a side note, I'm using defer here. That's a best practice. If I use defer here as well, these scripts will be downloaded in an optimal manner. These scripts will be run in order, right? So the order here is respected with defer, which is important because this script will create the Axios uh, variable. So then in this script, right, this one, we can use Axios, right? So then here, if I, if I want to make a GET request, I will use the same URL. So Axios actually also works with a promise, right? So we can use async await or dot then. And I'm going to format it in the same way. So with Axios, we also get a response. And let's see what we get. Okay, so then here uh, we get some object. In here, we can actually also already see the data that we want, right? So the users are already here. We don't need to parse this as JSON, right? Remember here we had to do an additional step basically. Here with Axios, Axios already does that for us, right? So we can already use rest.data. Right, so this is the actual data that we want. Right, so this is one benefit of using Axios. It automatically parses the response body data as, as JSON. Right, and Axios provides more uh, functionalities. For example, if you have some kind of uh, upload widget and you want to show a progress bar to the user, Axios makes that very convenient. That would be 
a major hassle to do with fetch, right? Now, one of the reasons that Axios can do that is because under the hood, it's actually using the so-called XHR object. So let's look at that next. So this uh, used to be the way to do AJAX calls in the browser, but it's being replaced by fetch these days, right? So people have, have typically moved away from this, but it is still used by uh, external libraries under the hood, like Axios, by uh, jQuery, um, and you can still use it natively yourself as well. So let's see how we would do that. So we would create a new XHR object, right? So you'll see the syntax is actually quite uh, different from uh, you know, the modern uh, promise-based uh, APIs. Okay, so now we have an XHR object. So we can do something with that. We can say open a get request to this URL. And then we can say send the uh, request. Now, if we want to do something with the response, we have to listen for the onload event. And here we define a uh, function. So here we can access the response, right? So we have to use xhr.response. Okay, so if I save here, let's see what we get in the console. Okay, so uh, we see our data. This is actually the data that we want, but it is still in JSON format actually. You can tell by these quotation marks in the object keys, right? So we have to parse the data as JSON ourselves. So with XHR, right? So it's the same with uh, fetch here, right? In XHR, you do it by setting the response type before sending it. So we can say the response will be in JSON. So then now when I save here, right? So now we do get the data as normal JavaScript format, right? So this may be something that you want to use if you have some kind of upload or download widget and you want to show a progress bar. Okay, so then we uh, will look at jQuery. Now I consider jQuery to be a legacy library. So people have moved away from this to React, Angular and Vue, but there are still a lot of projects that use jQuery. Pretty good odds that you will run into that sooner or later. So jQuery is also an external library just like Axios. So we need to import that. Right? So I'm not gonna uh, use Axios anymore. Now we're gonna use jQuery. Right? I will also say defer, this is a best practice, right? So I also need to make sure that it comes before our own script here. So then in here, we can actually use the jQuery variable that the previous script has created. Now people typically, uh, you know, make that the dollar sign. Right, so then you can simply write dollar uh, sign dot get. So we don't have to write jQuery dot get, but you, it's only one character. Dollar uh, sign dot get. That's the URL that we have to pass here. So let's see. Okay, and then as a second argument, we get the the data actually. Right. So then in this uh, function, we can do something with that. Let's actually log. Okay, so here we already get the data that we want, and it is a normal it's it's a normal JavaScript format. So with jQuery, it's also it's already converted from JSON to normal JavaScript, right? And jQuery actually uses the XHR uh, object under the hood. Okay, so that was jQuery. Okay, so now we get to uh, this one, which is actually also native in the browser. We don't have to import anything, but not many people know about this one. However, I think it will become more well known in the future because it solves one particular task very well which is uh, sending analytics data to the server. So for example, a user wants to leave the page and when the user does that, we want to send some analytics data to our server right before the user has definitely moved on. We want to make sure that we have one final, well, beacon basically sent out to the server. And if you try to do that with XHR or with Fetch, right, or any of the libraries built on them, the risk is that uh, right as the user, you know, clicks away on the page, that the browser does not send that fetch or XHR uh, request to your server, right? So then the server is not going to get the analytics data. With this one, with navigator.sendbeacon, we have more uh, reliability that the request will actually be sent. So it looks like this. So navigator, send beacon. And then in here, it's the uh, the uh, URL you want to send the data to. So in here we were getting data. Well, you would use this to, to receive data, but I still wanted to show you that, right? So this would be the URL. And then uh, let's actually make this full screen. So then the data that you would want to send. So that would be an object, for example. I want to send my data in JSON format. So I would make the object in a JSON object, I would stringify it like this, right? So then here I could send back, let's say time on page, 
I want to send back to the server how long this user was on my page, right as they click away. Right? And with send beacon, uh, there's more reliability that we do actually send a request to the server. If we look in the network tab, you will see that uh, we did indeed send a uh, post request in the network tab. It will actually call this a ping, right? So we're pinging our server. Right, so that's maybe something you want to use for uh, analytics data. All right, so I'm going to comment this out. So last one I want to show you is actually for Angular. In React and Vue, you are using any of these, right? most likely uh, Axios or Fetch. Um, but in Angular, a Angular is more what people typically refer to as a framework because it has all sorts of things built in. And one of those things is actually has actually to do with making network requests. So it actually has something called HTTP client. Okay, so I've quickly created an Angular project Project. It's a bit cumbersome to be honest. So you have to import the HTTP client module in the module file. So then here in component, you can use the HTTP client, right? So you have to work with a constructor here and Angular developers will be com comfortable with this. If you're not an Angular developer, this is going to look very strange. Then in here, for example, eventually you can call HTTP.get to make a get request. This is the URL. And in Angular with asynchronous tasks like network requests, you typically don't use promises, but uh, so-called observables. So you subscribe to an observable and then in here you finally get the data, right? And I can lock that here. If I reload here, this is just the boilerplate app, but you do see indeed we get our data here. And actually um, I don't even have to parse this as JSON. So it's already been converted from JSON to normal JavaScript for me. Right, so those are the top six options you have for making API calls in JavaScript. All right, that was it for this video. Hope that you learned a lot. Now, if you like the video and you wanna become a professional modern JavaScript developer, then definitely check out the full course. It has two beautiful real world projects that we built from scratch and you will learn much more like fetch and promises and async await, destructuring the spread operator, advanced JavaScript, how to structure or architect your project, modern front-end concepts like components, state, and rendering, and much more. It's all in there. Check it out. The link is in the description. In any case, thanks for watching, and I hope to see you soon.